threats, violence, intimidation of any kind are always unacceptable. And this kind of cowardly behavior threatens and undermines our democracy and our values of openness and respect upon which Canada was built. As leaders, we need to call this out and take a united stance against it because no matter who you are, who you love, the color of your skin, how you pray, where you're from, your gender, you deserve respect and you deserve to live in peace without fear of threats or violence. Can you believe the, oh, look at him, he's so proud of himself. Look at that face. Is he frozen? And I can tell you that I, our colleagues on this stage, and indeed our government, will always fight for this, particularly true today uh, as we celebrate pride in our capital city, but every day as well. Can you believe it? Well, I got to get to the, the highlight Threats of that part. I think under you deserve respect and you deserve to live in peace without fear of threats or violence. Because no matter who you are, no matter who you are, who you love, who you the color, love, of, your the color skin, of your skin, how you pray, how you pray where you're from. Where you're you're from. You're... Notice the only thing uh, acutely missing from here is your vaccination status. Your gender, you deserve respect. Unless you're one of them dirty unvaxxed, uh, a member of that cast. In which case, you don't deserve respect. You don't deserve your job. You don't deserve dignity. Hold on. Uh, hold on. L l let me bring this up. I'm I I sorry to make everyone puke again, because I, I think people, look, the, the aggregate knowledge of the internet will get the proper joke at the right time. Now, hold on, just because I'm totally, totally neurotic. Uh, Audio is good, people, before I go on for another <laughs> five minutes. The, if there's a joke out there, or if there's an astute observation to illustrate the egregious level of hypocrisy, the internet will find it. So here you have Justin Trudeau taking a selfie uh, with the RCMP horse that's stomping an 80-some-year-old uh, indigenous woman, if I'm not mistaken, because there were two horse stompings. Uh, I'm fairly certain the one we're looking at here is an 83-year-old indigenous woman stomped by the horse, an RCMP horse, and Justin Trudeau's uh, I was going to say Luftwaffle, but that's not the word. Uh, so let's just call them stormtroopers. Started off by lying about that. They said uh, someone threw their bike at a horse. It was an 80-year-old woman, an indigenous woman, if that changes anything you know, from what Justin just said, with a walker trampled by a horse. Luckily, she, didn't, she, didn't, she was out of the hospital soon. Uh, you got that picture. That's not the picture I'm looking for. Okay, you know what? Hold on. I'm, I'm going, I'm going to go back to my, to my Twitter feed. Cause I, I think depending on, um, you know, who, who you follow, uh, you know what? I'm not going to get it. Forget about it. What I was going to play was the video of Justin Trudeau. Those people are putting us all at risk. And his French speech where he says, uh, these people are taking up space, you know, uh, what did he call us? A, a small fringe minority with unacceptable views. A small fringe minority holding unacceptable views. This guy, by the way. Now, for those of you who don't know the context, because it's worth repeating, and I'll repeat it again and again. And like I'll always say, normal, decent people don't have to walk around condemning violence, condemning what is objectively inappropriate behavior. Normal, good people don't have to do it because it goes without saying. So when you get someone like Justin Trudeau, and I will say this, he's not a good person, in my view. When you get him coming out and saying, we must condemn violence. Someone called Christian Freeland today an effing B, and someone did. We must condemn this, this verbal assault. Well, first of all, you don't need to condemn it when you're a decent person, because it goes without saying. But when you condemn only this, only some big burly dude in a, in, a, in a white tank top approaching Christia Freeland, getting into an elevator, calling her an effing B, saying she's this. When you only condemn it then, but not, for example, when you assault other journalists, not, for example, when you berate 20% of Canadians, when you demean them, when you, uh, what's the word? Not when you, when, you, when you denigrate them. What's the word I'm looking for? 
when you reduce them to um, to vermin. Oh, there's a word for that. What's it called? Uh, what's the word called when you when you degrade a human? When you demean a human? When you deny, uh, not demonize, it's dehumanize. Thank you. When you dehumanize a good 20% of the Canadian population uh, and you say nothing then, and you only come out and say it when your right-hand WEF partner in crime gets berated by some dude in some building, your selective outrage is itself outrageous. When you only come out and, and call it out when it's one of your own, but then you dish it out when it's not one of your own, well, guess what? You're the problem. And so the video is of this individual in a uh, white tank top. You know, he looks like a, he's got a thick Canadian accent. Catching Christian Freeland as she enters an elevator, you know, and, and wasting the opportunity. Instead of saying, hey, uh, Christian, how's the WEF treating you? Or, or, you know, shake her hand and say, hey, can you tell me the WEF handshake? Or, you know, trolling her like Alex Stein, primetime 99, would do it. Uh, instead of doing it properly, the guy does it in a manner that's going to reflect poorly on him, poorly on everybody, and allow the victimizers to now pretend to be the victims. That's, that's all that it does. This guy did it in a way. First of all, if you have to resort to calling people effing bees, you're not verbalizing your, your disagreement properly. It's like flipping the bird to someone in traffic. Okay, it might make you feel good in the moment, but it's not how rational people express their disagreements and express their outrage. And in doing it, on the one hand, you open yourself up to getting you know punched in the face uh, when you give someone the, the, the middle finger. But you resort to calling someone an effing bee, great. It'll make you feel good in the moment, um, but it's going to reflect poorly on everybody. And now Krista Freeland, who I sincerely believe is a destroying Canada, along with her other WEF buddy, Justin Trudeau, now she gets to pretend to be the victim. So congratulations. You blew it for everybody. Uh, you did something stupid. You did something objectively disrespectful. Not that people deserve... You, know, you could have shown the same level of disdain and disrespect in a humorous manner that no one would have been able to look at you and say, you're the abuser here. You didn't. You succumbed to your animalistic instincts in the moment. And whoop de doo now Justin Trudeau gets to make it look like the small fringe minority holding unacceptable views are buffoons, barbarians, don't know how to express themselves, can't control themselves, and they need a government to do it for them. Now, someone in the chat said that we're not live on Rumble. That would be a problem. So hold on. Let me... Are we not live on Rumble, people? So like I always say, people, and it's not to please the YouTube overlords, it's because it's strategically the right thing to do. Uh, no, we should, we should be. We should be live. It's there. Uh, you know, I, I'm not saying it to cover my ass. I'm not saying it to be controlled opposition. I'm saying it because it's strategically the way you actually have to engage in this type of ideological confrontation. Come out and scream effing B. Good for you. You look like a lunatic. No one's going to no one's going to have any respect for what you have to say. And they're going to be able to write you off, write off everyone who might agree with you in principle, but not in expression. And congrats. Uh, you've set everyone back uh, a fair bit of time for the cause. We are on Rumble. Okay, good. Yeah, because I see the... Um, I see the thing in the back there. So that's it. Um, Christian Freeland now gets to claim to be the victim. Jugmeet Singh, by the way. Jugmeet Singh, who railed against pearl clutching. I'm not pearl clutching anything. I'm just telling you, when you do something like that, when you go up and you had your moment to capture it on film, to embarrass Christian Freeland, and all you do is embarrass yourself, I'm not pearl clutching. I've been called worse. I'm just saying, if your purpose is to make a point, do you remember when um, Elon, not Elon Musk, uh, the other guy there, Beardy McGee from Twitter, uh, I'm losing my mind, Jack Dorsey. Do you remember when Jack Dorsey had his Twitter feed hacked and instead of doing something insightful, something that would have been like, you know, satire-ish, but it would have been so subtle that people might not have known it was satire. They might have actually thought it was Jack Dorsey. Instead of 
using the fact that you just took over Jack Dorsey's Twitter, the CEO of Twitter at the time. You managed to hack his Twitter and you took it over. And instead of doing something that really would have awakened people and opened their minds, you know, like by maybe suggesting facts that people wouldn't know and they would say like, oh, is that true? And no, they, whoever did it used it to, to, to drop the N-word. Congratulations, you're an idiot and you just blew the biggest opportunity you had to raise people's awareness to actual facts they might not otherwise have listened to, but for the fact that it was coming from a hacked Jack Dorsey uh, Twitter handle. So I don't, do not hack because I, I'm not, I think these are probably illegal in certain jurisdictions, but once you have the opportunity and you blow it to be a child, ah, ah, you have to, the base is loaded. And you swing and miss. Um, so that's it. it well, hold, David Langford, I know that you're using caps not because you're angry, but because you, it helps you, I mean, because it's easier to read. And I know that you are legit and sincere. Being nice has really worked well. Well, you know what? Screaming effing B at Christian Freeland did not work any better. So in, in, the, in the strategic ways to play this game, um, there are, there are good ways to do it and there are bad ways to do it. Yep, I wouldn't have wasted that chance. They hijacked Jack Dorsey's Twitter feed and they just used it to put out the N-word. Congratulations. I mean, that's, that's as opposed to, oh, I don't know, let's just say, for example, had the Hunter Biden story been around, but maybe whatever the story was at the time, maybe, maybe, maybe publish that. And everyone's like, Oh, interesting. And then they find out it's true. And then you got to get Jack Dorsey saying, no, 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 no. Oh, this is true, but my, my account has been hacked. So you got to get Jack Dorsey apologizing for the truth on the basis of a hack to confirm that he's not the one spouting the truth because he doesn't want to, you know, get the email from Hillary. Oh, anyhow, so that's it. That's, what, that's what's going on in the news, peeps.